Welcome to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, where our goal is to connect listeners to the great outdoors with hosts Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. I'm host Ben Brandell, owner of Meant to Be Outdoors, instructor of outdoor skills, and passionate about personal growth. I'm host Brian Hoffmeyer, wildlife biologist and avid outdoorsman. Welcome back to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. It is Myth Monday. I am your host, Brian, with my fabulous co-host, Ben Brandell, here with me. Hello, hello. We are going to be talking about uh, some activities you can do outside with your family. It is almost fall. I don't know. what When's the official first day of fall? Have we passed that yet? We're here towards the, the end of August, beginning of September, so I'm going to say it's fall. We're close. We've had a pretty mild end of summer after just treacherous first couple months of summer so people are really getting more outdoors and thinking about getting more outdoors so we thought we would address this topic of feeding bread to ducks today but before we get into that i just want to say how thankful i am that you are listening to this today i know it's monday if you're listening on the day this comes out so hopefully this will uh, start your week off well have you a good week at school or a good week at work and i also want to say thank you to now that school is back in session, you know, we're hearing from some of the local homeschools and some of the partners we've worked with in the past for some in-school programming. And I'm just so thankful for those people that are reaching back out. We can't mm-hmm. wait uh, to get to work uh, back with your students and you. Yes, absolutely. So let's jump into our topic here, and that is feeding bread to ducks. When we were kids, you know, for me, it was really at the lake around the big marinas. There was all this waterfowl, geese, mallards. Um, there's Those are the main species you're going to see around. They seem to not be as shy as your your wood ducks and teal and pintails and stuff. But waterfowl right there around these marinas, a lot of city parks have them close by, even sometimes in the river systems. But it's so fun to interact with them and feed them. But the main thing that they get fed is bread because people always, we always seem to have bread as a human race, right? Yeah, I mean, here locally, all of our parks, you know, they're free to the public. A lot of families will take their lunch, go out, eat. And throw their scraps, especially their bread, mm-hmm. out to the, the waterfowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've even seen people with old moldy loaves throwing whole slices like Frisbees out there for Those them. are the best really ones, yeah. Really the heel of that bread, the, the non-good stuff. Right. Um, <laughs> and and the, myth, the myth that we're going to go towards here today, guys, and when I first say this, I don't want you to take it as, oh, he's, he's a party pooper, he's ruining the fun. We just want, you, we still want you guys to have fun. But at the same time, we want you to respect and care for the wildlife and understand the truth of what's really happening. With that being said, no one should ever be feeding bread to ducks. It it isn't good for them. Now, Ben, is it going to, the moment you feed them, is it going to make them sick and die? I mean, I never saw one die when I fed a bread. Right. Feeding bread to ducks isn't going to to kill them right then and there. Um, It's kind of the process of how many people are feeding them and and how often are they being fed and, you know, all the hypotheticals. But at the end of the day, it does have an impact on them and it is usually negative. Yeah. And I've even heard, you know, sometimes you'll go to these places, especially these really busy um, urban parks that have ponds in them. And you'll see signs and the signs say, please don't feed us bread. You'll even sometimes see, please feed us. And the reason the sign may say, please feed us, which obviously you're seeing two contradicting mm-hmm. stories. There's mm-hmm. going to be confusion the ones that say, please feed us, is because they have been fed so much, they no longer know how to get food. So they're either going to die or have to be fed something. So it's better for them to be alive and, I guess, unhealthy than it is for them to just starve to death. An example of that is my family and I went to Kentucky a few weeks ago for a vacation. And uh, at, behind one of the hotels we stayed at had a, I'm calling it a huge pond, because that's yeah. what it was. It was uh, but, in but the middle of the city. brick walled and fenced in. Yeah, 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 fenced in. I mean, you couldn't get in. It'd be really difficult to get in and swim. Mm-hmm. They had it that uh, secluded or, or closed off. But um, they didn't have a, an actual physical sign that said, feed us or don't feed us. But they had, you know, feeding machines. Inside the machines were, were pellets. Yeah. Looks like tiny pieces of dog food. And that's really them saying, feed, mm-hmm. you know, give us your quarter and, and feed them. And yeah. we did. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. The the duck pellets, even fish food, all of that is a much nutritious, much more nutritious option than just feeding them bread. Uh, you know, the fact is that bread is edible to ducks, and they love it. They do. They love it. If you've ever fed it to them, it is a wild frenzy. The geese come in and get mean. It, it's a show. It, <laughs> it really is. is. That's yeah. part of the reason the kids love it. Um, and they can digest it. I've heard people say that say not to feed them bread. They don't back it up with any 
actual truth. They just say, well, they can't digest it. Well, that's not true either. They, they can digest it just fine. It's wheat product. They eat grain, you know. So then it leads you to the question, well, why is it bad why? for them? Yeah. And so let's cover some of those reasons why it really is bad. And the first, the first thing is, is that it is basically candy for them. You know, Ben, I know the easiest way to get you in a good mood is to get you a Snickers bar and Dr. Pepper. Yes. So basically, you're you're getting them their Snickers bar and their Dr. Pepper. Well, I bet they're feeling pretty good then. They probably are. <laughs> but you know what comes with Dr. Pepper and Snickers if you have too much of them? You gain a few pounds. You gain a few pounds. And that's what can happen for these ducks. They can get overweight. They are really getting straight carbs and no other nutrition. They're not getting protein, vitamins, nothing, especially most of the time. It's white bread that they're getting, this pro- highly processed white bread. They're not getting any nutrition from it. Um, you know, if we think back to your time and my time working as outdoor educators, um, I spent a couple years as an animal trainer, and you used the animals to go to schools and educate. We only used uh, rescue animals. So they either were injured in the wild or couldn't go back to the wild for some reason, but one of the reasons because the, they imprinted w- right one mm-hmm. of the reasons we got a lot of them was because they were imprinted and can you kind of explain to everybody what what that means why this perfectly healthy animal that should be out living its wild life like god created it to has to now live with humans because that is the same case that can happen with this feeding of bread to ducks yeah i mean it's kind of like domestication but what it really is is that animal possibly perceives itself as you the human right so because you have taken care of it it's stayed in your house you fed it you've literally lived life with it every single day like we used to with some of those animals right um they're not imprinting they rely completely on you they're not intelligent enough to understand that they that you and them are not alike right they can't figure that out so they learn every animal's whole purpose of existence is to eat survive and have more babies. That's that's why they're here. That's the whole purpose out there. Um, and so they're going to do that the easiest way possible, minimizing their risk and minimizing the amount of energy they have to use. So if you are feeding ducks bread every single day at the same place, and it may not be you, but if you fed them here, and then the Smiths fed them there, and then the Jones fed them there tomorrow, or even in the span of the same day, guess what? They're never going to leave. They're not going to leave. Right. And so then the only thing they're eating is bread. Now they're malnourished. Mm-hmm. It, it takes, this is really crazy. It takes like something like eating 30 crawfish an hour for eight hours straight to produce the nutrients for one egg. So if they aren't able to get those nutrients, now they're not even making eggs. If they are making eggs, they may not be viable well and and if while they're eating bread that would keep them from going to eat the food that they should be eating correct they're going to feel full after they eat the bread and then that's it's going to hurt the reproduction again because they're only going to get they're only going to take what is easy if, if it takes more effort to go get the worm off of the bank they're not going to do that they're just going to eat the bread that's there uh, the young really struggle because they learn very early you know, when they can't even fly, all they can do is swim and walk around these little fledglings. They're so cute, and it's so cool to get them to come up close with this bread. But they learn to eat that, and they're getting no nutrition in the most important part of their growth cycle. Mm. So what can happen is something called angel wing, which is where really their joint and their wing, and instead of normal development, it kicks out. So their le- their wings will literally kick out, and they can't fly. They'll go their whole life and not fly just because they had too much bread at the park when they were a baby. And that's it's kind of a sad reality. It is a sad reality, Brian. And to even think more like through the whole process, you know, that's because we're having a negative impact on them. That's something that we're doing that we could control, you know, by not doing it or definitely limiting it. Um, I know that it's impacting waterfowl, but uh, are there other animals that feeding bread can, can impact? <laughs> It's kind of endless, the impacts of it, which which is crazy because it just seems like such an innocent thing to throw some bread to some ducks at the park. But even uh, other birds, so as the pieces that aren't eaten lay there and, and get fungus, you can affect the water quality. So now you're even affecting uh, fish and things that live in the water. But something that really is really dangerous for all bird species is aspergillosis, which is a fungus that affects their breathing system. And any respiratory infection obviously can be fatal. So if those crumbs sit there for a few days and get fungus, 
aspergillosis grows on them. If other birds come by and eat that, now you're affecting flying birds that are not just waterfowl, but other birds as mm. well. Wow. It's also going to attract all kinds of pests. Any of those crumbs or leftovers, the things you drop that don't make it into the pond, rats, mice, insects, all these things that people don't really like interacting with, now you're attracting to the area. On the more dangerous side is, if you're throwing out food, everything's coming. Now you've got predators coming. Coyotes, raccoons, foxes, they're coming here to these areas where these waterfowl are living, nesting, sleeping at night, and now you've got predators that could possibly be taking, preying on some easy food. That's good. Well, that's a good point, for sure. How can we, I mean, moving forward, you know, I'm guilty. You're probably guilty of this. A lot of people listening are, are guilty of feeding bread to waterfowl again we feel like it's a harmless thing we've learned that it's yeah seems very innocent but it seems very innocent right what can we do because it is an activity that is man they've been we've been doing that for years and years and years and it's fun to watch them feed yeah what what can we do well as a biologist i do feel obligated to say that the best option is to truly not feed them at all but i do realize that there are these urban areas where these waterfowl have been habitualized to humans they don't migrate anymore they're residents they live there um and it the parks are okay with you feeding them so now that you've listened to this let's feed them things that are nutritious that they're still going to like so things like corn peas the duck pellets a lot of places are going to offer the pellets but even if you just want to grab a dog food a bag of dog food or cat food from home in a ziploc baggie and throw them that that's going to be very nutritious for them, and they're going to eat that. They're, they're, they're not scavengers, but they're omnivores, so they're going to eat pretty much any plant or animal material that they can get because they need so much nutrition. So take them something that has nutrition. Um, lettuce, kale, spinach, any of those vegetables that right, you vegetables. normally would associate with being healthy. Right. Stay away from any of the white processed flour things like bread, chips, crackers, it, it all is going to have the same effect as just throwing bread out there. Well, good. I'm glad there are options that we can still go out and, and use. I know that uh, not doing it is best, but if you're going to do it, then use vegetables. Absolutely. Most of all, we want you to get outdoors, so yeah. we, we hope that you are, maybe you find a park to go feed the kids, but yeah, try to find one of those places that they're already being fed and then feed them something nutritious. That is going to be it for this episode of the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. We hope that you guys are enjoying. We hope that you are looking forward to fall and the content that we're going to bring you. Again, thank you so much for listening. If you want to get on Patreon and become a member and support us financially, we would really, really appreciate it. Most of all, hit that automatic download button on whatever platform that you listen. Please leave us a review. Let us know how we're doing. If you want to jump on Facebook or Instagram and throw some topics at us that you'd like to hear from us, we'd be glad to listen to those. Uh, between now and next time, we hope that you find some time to get with your family and go have some fun outdoors. Thank you for listening to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, hosted by Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. Please help us by subscribing. Also, follow along on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook.